Welcome back to Battleship Systems. Today we're going over some tips for solving problems with three-phase power distribution systems. This is part two of a series that deals with the ways a battleship's three-phase power system is different from what you'll find in residential and commercial buildings. Please check the errata page in the description. In this video we're talking about ground faults. So first, what exactly is a ground? Earth is made up of water and other minerals that act as an unlimited repository of electrons. We can pass it as many electrons as we want and it will keep it. We can also take as many electrons as needed and it will keep on giving. Grounded electrical systems essentially have one wire that is always connected to ground and an auxiliary wire that is used for ground faults. On residential service, the first wire going to a ground is on the pole transformer itself. The neutral wire on the center tap is connected to ground before it even enters your home. You can say that the transformer is able to suck up and spit out electrons into the ground. However, the normal path of electrons would be to flow into and out of your home using that center tap forming a closed loop. Normally, only a very small amount of current flows through the ground connection. Electrical appliances that have metal enclosures make use of that auxiliary path to ground. If a wire entering your home touches this extra ground wire, there is now a complete low impedance path from the ground into the transformer, through the appliance, and back to ground. This will essentially cause a short circuit and blow a fuse or trip a circuit breaker shutting off the flow of electricity to that appliance. The idea is that if there is this low resistance path to ground, the high voltage will choose that path and not go through anyone who happens to be touching the appliance. Battleships do not use a ground as part of their electrical circuit. If they did, any electrons entering the ship's hull would immediately pass through the steel and dissipate into the minerals of the seawater, causing corrosion of the hull. That's why it's important to have an ungrounded or floating neutral AC power distribution system that keeps electrons away from the hull. Now I'm not saying that battleships don't have ground wires. There are certainly cases where ground is used, and we'll cover one of those in a moment, but consistently sending a current to the hull should be avoided at all costs. So does a ground fault always blow a circuit breaker? The big difference here is that in ungrounded systems, it won't. Let's prove that with our three-phase ungrounded distribution panel. So here I hooked up a light from C to B and a motor from B to A. This is the ground wire from my house. As you can see, I can touch this wire to any of the phases and no fuses are blowing. Now obviously if I touch the wire to two phases, it's gonna create a short circuit and blow a fuse. Let's see what the potential difference between one of these phases and ground is. It's about 62 volts. But if you remember from our previous video about three phase systems, this is a ghost voltage. Let's use our low impedance multimeter and see what the actual reading is. Not a lot of volts, but still enough to cause stray current corrosion over time. Now that doesn't mean it's safe to touch. Voltage readings to ground in ungrounded distribution systems are inherently unpredictable, and our bodies can absorb and release electrons acting as a ground. So how do we diagnose a ground fault in an ungrounded system? If no fuses blow, do we just have to wait until we start seeing wires smoking or for holes to start appearing in the hull? Battleships have a device called a ground fault detector outfitted to their power distribution switchboards. It's basically just a light bulb connected to each of the three phases and then wired together on the other side. We can connect our ground fault indicator to all three phases. This will make all the lights come on, but notice how the lamps are dim. To test for a ground fault, we can connect a ground wire to the lamp bus. Since all three lights are still lit, it means we don't have a ground fault. But look what happens when I intentionally create a ground fault in one of the phases. 
that light bulb goes out and the other two burn brighter. I can create a ground fault to any one of the phases and our ground fault detector will indicate it. At this point our job would be to open breakers one at a time until the ground fault indication disappears. You would then test each branch of the circuit using a MEG meter, with one probe connected to the wire and the other connected to the hull until you find the fault. I think it's important to understand exactly how a ground detector lamp works. Without a ground fault, the current going into the bulbs forms a balanced delta power supply. As the voltage alternates from positive to negative on one of the phases, the current from the other side of the bulb is supplied from the other two phases connected to the bus. Electrons have no reason to go to the ground, so they don't. When there is a ground fault somewhere, a closed circuit is formed in essence through the hull back to the lamp bus, then to the bulb. This means there is no longer a complete circuit to light that bulb, so it turns off. Consequently, all the power that particular bulb was using from the lamp bus is now available to the other two bulbs, so they burn brighter. So what causes a ground fault on a battleship? Certainly, battle damage would be our first suspect. But even during peacetime, a conductor's insulation could have some small damage that was caused by overcurrent, moisture, or general wear and tear from the ship's maneuvers. If left unchecked, a small ground fault can cause so much electrical stress on the remaining insulation that it will eat through a larger area, causing a larger ground fault or even a short circuit. Remember that in ungrounded systems, the electrons want to go to the adjacent wires a lot more than they want to go to ground. So what do you think is safer? A grounded system where ground faults cause a dangerous arc but quickly interrupt current flow, or an ungrounded system where ground faults carry a much lower voltage but don't trip the breaker. Let me know in the comments section below, and don't forget to like and subscribe. In lieu of donations to me, please consider donating to a battleship museum like the Battleship New Jersey. At the time this video is made, they're also collecting for donations for their dry docking project. There is a link in the description that will bring you to the Home Port Alliance for the USS New Jersey website where you can donate to the nonprofit organization. Thanks for watching.